Member Marlin. I now give the floor to the Honorable Member Arian. You now have the floor, MP. Good morning, all. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you to the Minister and his support staff for the answers to the questions posed. But I also asked a question I believe that was not answered. I asked, is there any persons, family members of the Council of Ministers that has security detail? So is there any family members of the Council of Ministers that have extra, extra security provided to them, even potentially 24-hour security? Please, that question was not answered. I heard my colleague say he also asked a similar question. And as my colleague just mentioned, the government of contradiction, because it's not just a government of contradiction, it was a concerted effort to limit the freedom of expression or even campaigning <coughs> by other parties. Because you, you stated in your previous meeting that you do not, to you, Mr. Chairman, the minister does not make decisions without consulting the relevant stakeholders. But now you're answering and saying, yes, we, we, we did not consult with the relevant stakeholders, and it's still ongoing. So you did make a, you did make a decision without finalizing that, that discussion. And that decision then only affects a few. A few. Um, and you say now it's by legal affairs. So would you then get an advice? So then he has to go to council of ministers, so maybe next week Tuesday. So are you going to? end public meetings a couple of days before elections? What would be the logic behind that? That we have now, we'll continue with public meetings, but then two or three days before, we'll end it. I, I, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't understand, I don't see the logic, and it just seems like a lot of confusion, and more so, it feels very, very, very targeted. Thank you very much, Honorable Member Arian. I now give the floor to the Honorable Member Bruff. You now have the floor. Thank you. Good morning, St. Martin. Those, good morning, Minister, and your support staff and fellow colleagues in Parliament. Uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I would like to have some clarification on some of the questions asked. One of them was, I believe it was a bit of misunderstanding, was with regard to the, the scanners. It was stated in the first round that the quotation was, re was already requested. In my second round, I asked, how long ago was this quotation requested and when are they expecting a the feedback? So that answer I have not received. In addition to that, I've also asked the minister as well, with the new guidelines, and even though we don't have it before us, maybe he already knows, does it, does it, does it stop people from voting or getting information to vote? That was also one of the questions that was asked that was not answered. And let me see one more. One second. Let me just verify something here. <coughs> yes, I also asked with regard to can the minister share details of the guidelines, and also in in an answer that was given, it was information was still forthcoming when they made the decision, that information was still forthcoming. What does that mean? Does that mean that the minister received some type of information and the decision was taken? Or, you, you know, so there's, there, needs a bit, there needs to be a bit of clarity as to what brought them to that decision. Because the honorable minister is part of the council of ministers. He, dis, he together unanimously with the rest decided that they are going to stop or I don't know the detail, let me just say they're gonna put a pause on the public gathering. What was the reason? That, that's one thing I would like the Honorable Minister to please clarify for us here today. I'll to you, Mr. Chairman. And that'll be it for, for now. Thank you very much, Member of Parliament Bruff. I now give the floor to the Honorable Member La Cruz. You now have the floor, sir. A blessed morning to one and all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Minister of Justice and your support staff, my colleagues, those in the Tribune and those listening in 
on all social media platforms. Mr. Chairman, through you, a comment that was made concerning the military assistance. I have before me the El Bay signed by the governor that came in, and it was upon the request from the prime minister asking for support from the military during this period. It is in Dutch. There is a point, point three, that het verzoek daarnaast ziet op het op de verkiezingsdag bewaken en beveiliging van de stemloketten en de handhaven van de openbare orde door middel van zichtbare aanwijzigheid op strategische punten op het eiland. Nou, being a person that has served in the military for various years, I know the effect that having the military at specific locations, as is said here, especially the voting polls, can be intimidating and will be intimidating on islands like Aruba and Curaçao where the military is visible almost every day to all citizens and not like St. Martin. I think this is a, a, another form by the Prime Minister to keep the numbers low and the turnout. I am extremely worried about this because this means that our people will pass by, see military, and think that it is more than what it actually is. You will pass and have a feeling in the, in the document, it says to literally protect. But protect who? If there are no politicians there, I have not heard of any person ever on St. Martin going to vote and has been attacked because of a specific political party that he, is, he or she is following. So I want to make it clear to everyone here on St. Martin, please do not let anyone do this. Go out and vote. Do not let anyone go out and vote. So the, do not let any do not let the presence of the military make you feel that there is a threat at the voting polls when you go out and vote. Go out and vote. Thank you. I thank you I didn't want very to. much, Member of Parliament. No, I didn't want to. La Cruz.